Super cool intro. Jason all with the Humble Fungus. Humblefungus.com and on Patreon, the Humble Fungus. All right. Since I can't do video editing because I'm really not good at it, that was my attempt at a good intro. Hashtag winning. Hashtag tiger's blood. Jesse, the Humble Fungus, I'm here with part two on uh, my tub and humidity dome series. So today, uh, I've already watched you through uh, how to uh, take care of your mushrooms at home, right? How do you keep it humid? How do you give them a good environment like I've got over there in the tent? Sorry, I had to chug my Pamplemousse La Croix. I might sound fancy pants. All right. So in part one, I covered the basics, right? The basic is if you need to keep the humidity up at home to keep your mushrooms fruiting and happy, put that over your block. Make sure that this is lifted up off the counter so air can pass through and mist the inside, the top and the sides regularly. Do not mist the inside of the block. Give me a second. Um, pressure cooker timers. Uh, so, that's what we covered in part one. You can also use Ziploc bags, you can use plastic bags, you can use whatever you want, as long as it keeps the humidity and lets oxygen flow. So, now we're going to go and we're going to make an actual monotub. Now, what is a monotub? It is just a term for a tub that has been modified to allow fresh air exchange, keep contamination low, so your mold, your dog hair, your cat hair, your blue lizard hair, um, child, uh, random boogers. Uh, yeah, anyways, the biggest problem the home grower has though is humidity, right? Humidity is sort of a bear, especially if you're here in Colorado where it is dry as hell and my face is chapped all the time now. Uh, so. How do we make a monotone? Well, covered in part one, it's got some holes in it, right? So if you're at home and you're in the United States, you are near a Target or Target or a Walmart or any number of chain stores or retail outlets where you can get these plain sterile tubs. They're about six, seven bucks usually retail. They crack really, really, really Easily. So if you're going to cut your own holes, be careful, right? You take it slow. Otherwise, they shatter. Anyways, that being said, let's make our monotub. Here, I have a three-inch hole adapter for my drill. I actually just move on a little closer so you can see. Easy peasy. Yo, dog, I heard you like drilling. So, why three inches? Because three inches, uh, so the big thing that you're gonna want is you're gonna want a lot of surface area in your air exchange, right? And the reason why you want surface area is because that's going to allow the highest transition of oxygen and CO2 in the environment. What does surface area translate to in the term of a hole? Three inches. Just about two and a half to three inches is gonna be your sweet spot for these holes. So three inch hole adapter. Next, you're gonna take this, and I'm gonna actually back up because it's gonna get loud. You're gonna take it and you can either put them here, super low, or you can put them up high. I prefer putting them up high and I'll explain why. Start slow.
That was too slow. Got to speed that up a little bit. You know, it's doing that at a weird angle. And the great thing is, is when you're cutting holes like this, you make really tasty plastic treats. Now, now it's in my beer. You're gonna make a second one. Oops, I cracked it. I'm gonna have to repair that. Easy peasy. Broke it. But we will live. You're not making art, you're growing mushrooms. If you had tiny little arms, this could be a still air box. I mean, they'd have really small arms. Finally, I'm not even gonna bother to remove the sticker because it never comes off. Done. All right. Picard, how many holes are there? Are there? Dude, oh, hole, six holes. All right. I'm gonna dump this on the floor because I'm filthy. Now, you've got like little schmutz all over here. Meh. Let's get rid of that. I'm just scraping this out with a pair of scissors. They're not even open. Why am I pulling these off? Because aesthetics and also contam. Also, one less thing to deal with. In hindsight, I probably should have used two and a half inch holes for this, but I've got reasons.
we have our basic mono tub. It is a tub where we have drilled holes. Not that many, just enough. Now, if I were at home and I had a mushroom fruiting block, what could I do? I could then take the tub, put the block in it, put the lid on it, and then every day I would miss the top and the sides. Or, I really need a rolling table. Or, I could do that to allow even more airflow. As you can see, I flipped it upside down. The lid is upside down. This isn't latched. Fruity block. Now I can miss the top and the sides. There are no covers or anything on these holes. Now, what if you're worried about contamination or you just really have a dry environment where you're worried about massive amounts being lost through open holes like this? Aha! Uh -huh. There are many, many options. Now, you've probably seen videos online where people take polyfill, which is plastic filling found in um, stuffed animals and pillows and shit, uh, and you stuff the holes with it. Save yourself the heartache, don't do that. Polyfill will eventually contaminate. You'll get mold, mist, and other crap inside of it. It's impossible to keep clean. there's a better option. I've got these holes. I need lots of fresh air, but I want to keep contamination out. This is a roll, an old roll, <laughs> of 3M Micropore medical tape. You can find this at any pharmacy. You can find this on Amazon. Sorry, awesome. back. This is 3M Micropore tape. It is a uh, medical tape and it is designed for wounds that have to be able to breathe, right? So if you get burns or other types of injuries, you don't want to seal them up. Uh, you want free air exchange, but you don't want to get any bacteria or anything in the wound. Boom! These are also usually sterile, unless you're being kicking them across the floor like me. Ah, look wow. So, if I were at home and I wanted to keep contamination out and uh, moisture in, I would find the edge of the tape, which is almost ever impossible. And I would take this. And Micropore comes in wider things. done. I have now made a perfectly clean filter patch. This will allow CO2 escape, air in, humidity stay in. But there's a better way. Oh, oh, oh. Get that off. That off. These are filter patches from Micropose. Uh, you can find them on Instagram. It's all one word. Micro pose, P O S E. Micro, M I R, M I C R O P O S E. Micro pose. These are backed with 3M adhesive. These allow free air exchange by keeping bacteria out. It will also keep humidity in. They are cheap. You can find these on Amazon. You can make your own, whatever. That's the damage spot. 
Gotta fix that. For that, I'll need duct tape. Now, why am I gonna use duct tape or Gorilla tape? It's sterile, right? I'm gonna clean the hell out of this tub, right? It's, I haven't cleaned it since I came from the store. I've just been drilling on it, picking at my nose, because it's chapped. This Colorado is so dry and drying out my mushies. Come on. So, Gorilla tape. <laughs> Don't need a lot. God, this stuff is sticky. Beautiful. Now, we have a clean environment that will hold humidity, keep contamination, dog hair, children, and everything else out. And uh, you can do it this way, or you can do it this way. You can put your block in it. Uh, you can fill it up with substrate, so like sawdust or something else like that. And uh, actually put your mushroom spawn in and grow your oyster mushroom, tupia bean, or whatever you want to grow in here. You can grow it in a tub. It's just a matter of getting the air weight. So, again, I would take my shiitake block, which is already thinning. I would mist the sides and the top, close it up, and it'd be done. Every, like every time I mist, I take the lid off, fan it, give it a little bit more air, close it back up. And when it's harvest time, I would reach in, harvest me some mushrooms. Now, how can we make it better? Well, first, we're gonna clean it. Now, does this have to be perfectly sterile? No, it never will be. Right? It's a plastic tub, there's pores, there's this, there's that, there's the next thing. What's your best option to keep it clean? Got lots. This is Lysol disinfecting spray. If you were to spray this entire thing, wipe it off and let it dry, it would be clean. This is 5% leach solution. You could also use 2% leach solution. Spray it down, wipe it, let it dry, it is now clean. This is plain water. Don't use this. This is 70% isopropyl alcohol. We're going to use this. Actually, I know that that's not 70%. I diluted that wrong. This is 70%. I'm not even removing the stickers. I think they add flavor. Also, they don't come off. Now while I'm doing this, notice I'm not wearing gloves. We're not in a sterile environment, there's moving air. I'm just trying to get this clean enough because I want to show you how to like keep a clean environment. Spray everything. You're going to clean both sides. You're going to wipe it all down. Why? Because people like me putting their mouths on shit in the store. Also, it's easier to see your mushrooms. Got some on the filter patches? Who cares? Just be sure to be gentle when you wipe the filter patches by accident. Otherwise, you'll wreck them. 
That is strong stuff. That's why I'm not in a place with contained air. Everything around me, there's three fans blowing. But let me note my environment real quick. This is a tub. I am cleaning it, I am not sterilizing it. It'll be pretty close to sterile. I'm in an environment with open air, but I am not on the floor. And if I back up a little bit, you can see I'm on a rolling cart. The cart is clean. I'm cleaning the tub, I've washed my hands. This environment is basically clean, except for the air movement. So, I'm cleaning this for all the contamination that's on it not in the environment before I get a bunch of freaking at mentions. Now, I've wiped it down. It is now relatively clean, except, again, for the air movement. What am I going to do? I'm going to come over here, lightly mist this, and I'm going to put this in it. I'm going to just set the lid. Now, I have assembled the environment. The isopropyl alcohol that I just sprayed will evaporate in 10 minutes. So this on the interior is now sterile. And it's gonna sit like this until I'm ready to put my block in it. Now, liners. Let's say you put a mushroom block in this. There's nothing on the bottom, see? So there's nothing in between your mushroom block and the bottom. If you've taken it out of the bag like shiitake, it's just sitting there. Maybe you want to lift it up out of the water or something else like that. There's a hack for that. So if you've got something like this and you happen to have a smaller tub you can put this on the bottom of your tub right about here and it will hold your mushroom block up clean this too or if you have gotten an even smaller tub or a basket or something else like that you can use that to hold your brick up off the ground that way if water does pool it doesn't get yucky right now I've got these lids right here that if I were to clean them off, I could put them in the bottom and hold my brick up. So what I'm talking about is that, right? If moisture pools in the environment, it's not gonna stay on this. Anyways, you get the idea. I wanna lift it up. Now another option is if you're gonna pour substrate in here, in the bottom and mix it with spawning, actually grow mushrooms in the tub, not in a bag or a block like this. You need a liner. And why do you need a liner? Because as your substrate is consumed by the fungus, it is shrunk because the fungus is actually excreting enzymes and consuming the lignin, uh, whatever's in the substrate, right? It is just consuming it. And so the actual volume and the moisture, et cetera, is actually pulled out of the block. And so it actually pulls away from the sides. Now, that does two things if you don't have a liner. It creates a microclimate that will cause side pinning and all sorts of contamination issues. Uh, because basically humidity pools there in between the substrate and the side wall. Number two, side pins 
which aren't that big a deal. You're going to get them anyways. Yeah. But super easy. If you want to put a liner in the bottom of your tub, get a black garbage bag. This one used to be sterile. It is not. Take it. Find the micro pour tape you threw on the floor. Find about where you want it on the side. Just go inside to side. Back up so you can see. What I've done is I've taken this garbage bag, it's kind of flat, cut it up a little bit already, and I've already customized it a little bit to the sides, keep it down. Then I'm going to grab a relatively sharp pair of scissors. I'm going to just avant-garde, avant-garde this side with my incredibly dull scissors. Again, it ain't art. We're growing mushrooms, We're not painting Picasso. So then I'm out on the outside of the tub. This is not the final resting place for this liner, just FYI. That's why the duct tape trip doesn't work. Eh, it's kind of high on one side, but I don't. You'll get the idea. So now I'm going to, need to take this. Tuck, fold, crease, tape. Why am I doing this with micropore tape? You can use scotch tape, you can use any other tape. I happen to have clean, sterile micropore tape. And now that I've taped all the corners, I will take the tape off that I held this in place with. And I will take this final corner using the tape that I used. I accept that. And I will spray it with isopropyl alcohol. I will now wipe this down. It is still moist with ISO, which takes 10 minutes to dissipate. That side is now clean and sterile. And when you when you're ready to inoculate your tub. drop it in. Once again, give it a light misting of ISO or whatever your cleaning solution is and put your substrate into that. Done. That's a monotone. Everything. <laughs>